Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, a few weeks ago, I compared the 16 gigabyte Radeon RX 6800 and 8 gigabyte GeForce RTX 3070 in some new games using ray tracing and found that due to the increased VRAM requirements of ray tracing, we'd found this odd and rather unexpected situation where the Radeon GPU was becoming better at ray tracing. But this wasn't due to AMD having a more advanced ray tracing implementation. That's certainly not the case at all, far from it. In fact, the RX 6800 is still delivering the same mediocre ray tracing performance. Instead, the difference now being that the RTX 3070 is kind of broken, running out of VRAM, which results in just a whole host of issues from degraded image quality, instability, and horrible frame time performance. But before we get into all of that, Today's sponsor spot is brought to you by Gigabyte's GeForce RTX 40 series laptops. The Aorus 15X and 17X are premium gaming machines with up to NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 laptop graphics, delivering a great ray tracing experience in a performance optimized design. Thanks to the new Ada Lovelace architecture, these new systems support DLSS3 frame generation, enhanced max Q efficiency, and super fast AI acceleration. You may also be tempted by the excellent Gigabyte G5, which offers a range of powerful RTX 40 series GPUs and the latest 13th gen Intel processors, all in an attractive, great value package. For creators on the go, Gigabyte's Aero series have you covered. The Aero 14 is just 17mm thin, supports HDMI 2.1 and Thunderbolt 4, plus it has fast CPU and GPU options. Need a bit more screen real estate? The Aero 16 has you covered. For more information, please click the link in the video description. Now, when wrapping up my findings, I noted that it was a super disappointing realization that in just about every ray tracing enabled scenario we covered in the video, had the RTX 3070 been paired with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it would have been faster than the RX 6800 and therefore would have delivered highly playable performance. Now, not long after that content was released, Buildzoid privately messaged me and he asked, didn't you have the Quattro version of the 3070? And the second he said that, I knew exactly where he was going with that. And I was a bit shocked and a bit disappointed that I forgot about the RTX A4000. Now, NVIDIA has dropped the Quattro branding from their productivity GPUs, but right away, I knew what Buildzoid meant, and I knew I had an A4000 somewhere. That's because back in 2021, buying a graphics card was mission impossible, and buying one at a reasonable price was, well, that was impossible. But most gamers still looking for a graphics card knew that prices were sky high, and rather the goal was just getting your hands on something that could play games, and a lot of you had noticed that the A4000 was generally available. So therefore many of you asked me to buy one, test it out, so I did, and boy oh boy was that an expensive video to make. Anyway, here in Australia the A4000 didn't really make sense for gamers at a price tag of $2000 for in-stock listings, whereas at the time RTX 3060 Ti's, they could be easily had for $1,250. But I did note at the time that a possible advantage of the A4000 was the much larger memory buffer. So after making a single video on the A4000, I just threw it in my graphics card drawers and totally forgot about it, quite literally. But as Buildzoid said, the A4000 is essentially an RTX 3070, well, a 3070 Ti really, but with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. They both use the J104 silicon, and like the 3070 Ti, the A4000 packs 6,144 cores, 192 texture mapping units, and 96 ROPs. The only real difference is being that the A4000 comes with twice as much VRAM at 16 gigabytes, and the memory is clocked 26% lower, while the cores are clocked 12% lower. Back when I first tested the A4000, I was able to overclock it, resulting in slightly better performance than that of the RTX 3060 Ti, so generally slightly slower than a standard RTX 3070. But all that clock frequency stuff, not really important for this video. Rather, I want to run all the tests that crippled the 8GB RTX 3070 with the 16GB A4000, as this will provide us with very clear evidence for what could have been possible with the RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti, had those graphics cards come with 16 gigabytes of VRAM. So let's fire up the Ryzen 7 7800X 3D test system and get to it. For this video, I'm not really interested in the actual frame rate performance, so I won't be diving into the blue bar graphs, rather we'll just be looking at the recorded gameplay footage. So let's go do it. First up, we have The Last of Us Part 1 using the ultra quality preset at 1080p, and here the game is completely broken with just eight gigabytes of VRAM. Also, please note that the RTX 3070 saw major performance related issues when using the high preset at 1440p, and that's still true when using the latest version of the game. 
I also noted that had the RTX 3070 been paired with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, there would have been far fewer complaints about this game, as it played very well on the RX 6800, and let's go look at that now. Unlike the RTX 3070, the A4000 has no performance related issues in The Last of Us Part 1, delivering buttery smooth frame time performance, much like what we saw from the Radeon RX 6800. With the visuals maxed out, both graphics cards deliver an excellent experience at 1080p and are highly playable at 1440p as well. The A4000 is quite a bit slower than the RX 6800 here as it's well down on core and memory clocks. The 3070 Ti, for example, would be on average about 30% faster when not limited by VRAM. So if we were to boost the A4000 frame rate here by about 30%, it would be comfortably ahead of the RX 6800. Next, we have Hogwarts Legacy, and here the RTX 3070 was completely broken using the Ultra preset with high ray tracing, as well as the high preset with high ray tracing. So the 8GB VRAM related performance issues seen in this title didn't just occur when maxing out the visuals. Apart from the horrible frame stuttering and inconsistent performance, the RTX 3070 was also plagued by muddy textures, which completely destroyed the presentation of the game. You can see here that the inconsistent frame time performance is hurting the frame rate of the RTX 3070, and at times the A4000's almost as fast, despite running at much lower core and memory clocks. Had the RTX 3070 been paired with 16GB of VRAM, it would almost always be above 60fps in this test. I won't bother comparing the RX 6800 here, basically the A4000 is able to match the smoothness of the Radeon GPU thanks to its 16GB VRAM buffer. Moving on to Resident Evil 4, we couldn't actually run these settings on the RTX 3070 as it would instantly crash to desktop, so already the A4000 is much more impressive here. Basically in my previous testing I was forced to manually adjust the texture pool down to just 1GB for the RTX 3070 to work. But here, the A4000 is flawless and performance overall is impressive at 1080p using full quality textures. And another 20-30% to boost from higher clocks that you would see on a 3070 or 3070 Ti would result in high refresh rate performance. The issues faced by the RTX 3070 and Forspoken were less about frame rate and more about visuals. Using the ultra high preset, the game enables ray tracing by default. And this requires over 9GB of VRAM, which the RTX 3070 just doesn't have. So instead of introducing horrific stuttering, which we see in other games, the game just avoids spilling over the memory buffer by not loading the textures at all, resulting in a flat and muddy looking presentation. The A4000 is able to solve this issue with its 16GB buffer, allowing for full resolution textures to be loaded. This enables the intended presentation of the game for the full experience, and as you can see, there is a night and day difference between how the game looks when using an RTX 3070 and A4000. A Plague Tale Requiem requires over 8GB of VRAM when using the Ultra and High presets with ray tracing enabled, and even with upscaling at 1440p, the 8GB RTX 3070 was still broken in terms of performance, suffering constant frame stutters. In this example, the A4000 is generally a lot faster than the RTX 3070 when comparing the frame rate, which is pretty shocking given that the 3070 is the faster product when not hampered by VRAM. It also means had the RTX 3070 Ti been paired with 16GB of VRAM, it would be capable of delivering over 60fps in this test, but in reality with just 8GB it's completely unusable here. For those of you more interested in 1440p, you can play using the balanced upscaling preset, and here the A4000 was good for over 50 FPS at all times, whereas the RTX 3070 was, again, completely unusable. So had a product like the 3070 Ti come with 16 gigabytes of VRAM, it'd be looking at consistently delivering over 60 FPS in this test, which would be a great experience in this single player game. Last up, we have the Callisto Protocol, and this game runs quite well on the RTX 3070 for about 60 seconds, after which point performance tanks and the game becomes unplayable. The A4000 though didn't suffer any issues thanks to its doubling of the VRAM and it's really crazy to see more than twice the performance out of the RTX A4000 once the RTX 3070 runs into VRAM issues. So there you have it, had the RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti come loaded with 16GB of VRAM they'd still be ripping through all the latest games with ray tracing enabled and they'd be doing so with relative ease as proven by the RTX A4000. Ironically, the reason why the RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti don't have 16GB of VRAM is because of the A4000. This is because Nvidia can charge more for their professional grade GPUs that are designed for work rather than play. 
Whereas the RTX 3070 features an MSRP of $500 US and the 3070 Ti $600 US, Nvidia is able to sell the same silicon for $1,000 US with the A4000. But if it's the same silicon and you can use the studio drivers with an RTX 3070, why would you pay twice as much for an A4000? Well, you see, many professional workloads require a lot of memory, and they simply won't work as intended with just 8 gigabytes. Generally, they just crash, you, you can't do the job. But most games will work, though, as we've seen, 8 gigabytes is becoming problematic even for gaming. And the problem for Nvidia, though, is that they don't want to cut their own lunch. If they were to offer a 16 gigabyte RTX 3070, there'd be really no reason to spend twice as much on an RTX A4000, and giving the A series card, say, 32 gigabytes of memory, that won't really work for Nvidia either, as they want to charge professionals $3,600 US for 24 gigabytes with the RTX A5000, and then $4,650 US for the A6000 with 48 gigabytes. And this is what made the RTX 3060 so popular amongst professional users, as its 12 gigabyte buffer was ideal for complex 3D modeling work, and with an MSRP of $330 US, it was considerably more affordable than the $700 US RTX A2000 12 gigabyte. Even today, the 12 gigabyte A2000 starts at $580, whereas you can purchase an RTX 3060 for just $320. The RTX 3060 can even render 3D models that much higher end parts such as the RTX 3080 can't, simply because it does have a bit more VRAM. AMD on the other hand doesn't have nearly the support or presence that Nvidia has in the professional space, so loading up their gaming cards with VRAM it isn't as detrimental to their bottom line. So while AMD is certainly giving gamers more when it comes to VRAM, they're not doing it out of the goodness of their heart, rather it helps them better compete for gamers money while having no real impact on their professional sales, especially given that most of their professional GPUs come paired with 32 gigabytes of VRAM or more. Of course, the real irony in all of this being that the RTX 3070 and 3070 Ti were pitched to gamers as being the superior ray tracing products, leaving parts like the RX 6800 to compete purely based on raster performance. But now, just two years down the track, we're starting to find numerous examples where these 8 gigabyte graphics cards simply don't have enough VRAM to take advantage of ray tracing, making the RX 6800 the superior ray tracing product, and in some instances you don't even have to turn RT on for 8 gigabytes to be a problem. And I should just note that we're not trying to make anyone feel bad about buying an RTX 3070 or 3070 Ti, well actually, maybe you should feel bad if you bought a 3070 Ti, no I'm just joking. They're great graphics cards, they still work well in most use cases, and they're products that were rightfully recommended by us in the past, though we did so while noting the potential issues that could arise from the more limited VRAM buffer. Instead, the goal here, as I noted in my previous video on this subject, which I highly recommend you go watch if you haven't already, is to raise awareness and educate gamers about what's going on and encourage them to demand more, especially with more affordable current generation GPUs still yet to be released. So it is our opinion that moving forward, 8GB of VRAM should be reserved for sub $200 products, and that 12GB should be the new entry point, with 16GB being sort of low end to mid range, and then really it should be 24GB or more beyond that. And this is what gamers should be demanding from AMD and Nvidia, anything short of that, totally unacceptable. And this is also something developers have been requesting from Nvidia, actually they've been asking for much more VRAM than that, but Without support from gamers, their requests have fallen on deaf ears. And on that note, Tom over at the Moore's Law is Dead YouTube channel has recently interviewed a few game developers, and they've all warned of the pending 8GB VRAM issues for gamers, stating that moving forward, 12GB of VRAM will indeed be the minimum requirement for 1080p gaming using dialed down quality settings. So while some might claim we're going out of our way to show the RTX 3070 in poor light with this video series, Time will not be on their side, and there are a number of major releases coming this year which are expected to crush 8GB graphics cards at the high end. But as I just alluded to a moment ago, the real reason for sounding the alarm on this is the fact that we could very well be looking at $400 plus 8GB graphics cards from Nvidia this generation, and that in my opinion would be a disaster for gamers. So let's hope that doesn't happen, but... Not looking good. Anyway, I'm going to end the video there. If you liked it, you know what to do. Subscribe for more content. And yeah, we'll have, of course, we'll have plenty more coming up on the channel. Some new GPUs, I reckon, next month. And 
some roundups and stuff like that. So worth subscribing for. Also, if you'd like to become a float plane or Patreon member, links are in the video description and signing up for either of those will give you access to our exclusive Discord server for members only, monthly live stream with Tim and myself, Q&A stuff, and behind the scenes content. So check that out if you're interested, but if not, that is perfectly fine. And I would like to thank you for watching this video. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.